This is S&P credit rating for Greece, showing that Greece now holds a triple B- rating with a stable outlook. This might seem like a technical detail, but it's a big deal symbolically. For quite some time, Greece had a lower rating compared to developing African and Asian countries, which wasn't a good look for a developed nation. After 13 years of being classified as junk, the riskiest category, Greece is now officially back in the investment grade category. This reflects a positive shift in its economy, bouncing back from a severe economic depression where GDP dropped by 25% and the unemployment rate went over 27%. Greece is a significant player in the world, counted among the most developed countries. While it experienced rapid growth after World War II, it has remained less developed within the EU. With limited natural resources, its industrialization process has been slow, and it has struggled with inefficient public sector bureaucracy and corruption. Some sectors, such as shipping and tourism, have shown impressive growth. These features present a mix of strengths and challenges for global interactions. Today, Greece is not only known for its beautiful islands and rich ancient history, but also for its economic challenges. The Greek economy took a serious hit during the years of crisis and austerity. It became a symbol of national mismanagement over the past two decades. Starting from its peak in 2008, Greece found itself at the center of the Eurozone crisis. Poorly planned decisions in the country had a ripple effect across the entire region, leading to slashed household incomes and pensions, the collapse of hundreds of thousands of businesses, and almost a third of Greeks lost their jobs. But today, Greece is booming as one of Europe's fastest growing economies. The country's impressive turnaround is getting recognition from credit ratings agencies, leading to upgrades in Greece's debt assessment and attracting big foreign investors. Moreover, the Greek debt-to-GDP ratio is on the decline, going from a high of 207% in 2020 to 172% in 2022. The economy is thriving, growing at twice the average rate of the Eurozone. Tourists are flocking back driving a construction boom and creating new job opportunities. Major international companies, including Microsoft and Pfizer, are making investments. Even banks that were on the brink of collapse have recovered, cleaning up their act, and are once again providing loans, which is benefiting the broader economy. But are there any signs of an improving situation for Greek families, individuals, and businesses? The government's success story doesn't match the reality on the ground in Greece. Living standards have dropped, unemployment is high, and many struggle to pay their bills. Greece is now seen as a model for other economies facing long-lasting economic challenges. So, what led to the crisis in the Greek economy? Is it really growing, and is it making life better for the people of Greece? Half percent generally across these markets. Let's talk about the speed with which we are watching this market deteriorate. We're red everywhere essentially, down by four, five percent. We're down over 16 percent. In 2007, the financial crisis that kicked off for the US had a global impact, affecting many developed and developing countries. Some nations, like Greece, felt the effects more intensely. To be precise, Greece's situation wasn't directly caused by the crisis, but rather triggered by it. The decline in Greece's economy and financial structure had already begun long before the crisis hit. So, one can say the situation became more obvious during the crisis. It's noticed that the financial crisis significantly increased the public debts of many developed countries since mid-2008, transforming into a serious debt crisis, especially in Europe. This crisis has brought a lot of uncertainties about the future of the Euro. An interesting point about the problems faced by European Union countries in this process is the weakness in financial policies. Looking at Greece, aside from weak public financial policies and ineffective financial policies, there's an additional dimension of instability, insufficiency, and unreliability of political institutions. From 2000 to 2007, Greece experienced rapid economic growth, making it one of the fastest growing economies in the Eurozone. During this time, the country's economy expanded by over 4% on average. However, things took a downturn, especially after 2007. Since then, Greece has consistently faced a negative nominal GDP rate, 
The debt crisis has continued to strain the real economy, leading to more layoffs and a rise in unemployment as well, as the cuts in public expenditures have increased as a result of severe austerity measures. After a historic depression during which the Greek economy collapsed by 28%, Athens finally seems to have opened a new chapter. First, there was the crisis from 2008 to 2016, followed by a stabilization period from 2017 to 2020, and since emerging from the pandemic, a return to growth. Despite the challenge of inflation impacting purchasing power, it's expected to reach 2.5%. Unemployment, which peaked at 28% in 2013, has dropped to 11%. Private consumption is on the rise, and the increasing industrial production index, indicating the performance of various sectors, shows positive dynamics in the Greek economy. Yes, the economy is better than it was in 2022, but it's not as good as it was 15 years ago, and the statistics back that up. Greece has one of the highest rates of relative poverty in the EU. The minimum wage in Greece acts like a safety net for workers. It's the lowest amount employers can legally pay, ensuring fair pay and preventing extreme economic inequality. Like in many countries, Greece's minimum wage depends on factors like overall economic conditions, cost of living, inflation, labor market conditions, and social and political factors. Although Greece has been gradually increasing the monthly minimum wage, the average annual wages in Greece are still lower than they were 12 years ago. Currently, the Greek economy is still 20% below its peak in 2007. What Greece has been through is even more challenging than the US depression of 1929. While the fall in the economy was similar, 28% in Greece, 29% in the US, it lasted longer. Four years in the US from 1929 to 1933 eight years in Greece from 2008 to 2016. Back in 2007, Greece's GDP per capita was three quarters that of the Eurozone. Today, it's just over half. The signs of the crisis are evident everywhere. Core inflation, which measures changes in the costs of goods and services, is still high, keeping purchasing power very low. The standard of living has dropped and both consumers and businesses lack confidence in the economy. Meanwhile, middle-class income taxes have sharply risen. Greece, with a population of 10.4 million, has witnessed a historic brain drain, losing over half a million people in a decade. This brain drain, comprising mainly university graduates and postgraduates, has emigrated to other EU countries since 2010, exceeding two-thirds of the total. It's evident that the brain drain is negatively affecting Greece's economy. The effects of recession and austerity, combined with a generalized mistrust and disillusionment towards Greece's institutions and the political system more generally, explain why so many Greeks chose to leave the country and to stay away. So, what's driving Greece's economy? The key driver is tourism, a vital industry that contributes 18% to Greece's GDP and employs over 900,000 people, making up a fifth of the workforce. Greece attracted a whopping 34.2 million visitors, making it one of the most visited countries in Europe and globally. Greece's allure as a tourist destination stems from its rich cultural history and numerous archaeological sites, especially in the capital city, Athens. With the longest coastline in the Mediterranean region, Greece's beach resorts, notably on islands like Santorini and Mykonos, play a crucial role in boosting tourism. The majority of tourist spending in Greece, significantly impacting the country's economy, comes from leisure visitors rather than business travelers. Greece's most significant success story over the past decade is its shipping industry. Among the top five nations in ship ownership, Greece, Japan, China, Singapore, and Hong Kong, these countries collectively control over 50% of the world's tonnage. In contrast, Germany, Japan, and South Korea have seen a decline in recent years, whereas Greece has been expanding its fleet. Greece maintains a strong presence in global shipping, with Greek ship owners holding a leadership position, overseeing about 20% of the world's fleet capacity. Greek shipping plays a vital role in the global economy, facilitating international trade and serving as a key component of the Greek economy. Greek ship owners are mainly into bulk-slash-tramp shipping, a sector resembling perfect competition. 
this sector is largely made up of small and medium-sized, privately owned or family businesses, making Greek shipping flexible and adaptable to economic changes and trade patterns. It primarily transports essential goods for the EU and global economies, such as agricultural and forest products, oil and oil products, gas, chemicals, iron, ores, coal and fertilizers. Notably, the Greek-owned fleet is the world's largest cross-trading fleet, with over 98% of its trading capacity carrying cargoes between third countries. Greek shipping also holds strategic importance for the EU, as both its economy and the well-being of its citizens depend on affordable energy access. The EU heavily relies on maritime transport, importing 88% of its crude oil, 74% of its natural gas, and 44% of its solid fossil fuels. With growing concerns about energy security, Greek shipping plays a critical role in ensuring the EU's diverse energy imports from distant parts of the world. However, the impact of the shipping industry on the Greek economy goes beyond its role in the services balance of payments. Greek shipping is central to a thriving maritime cluster that brings investments and job opportunities to the country. The overall contribution of the Greek shipping industry, considering indirect and induced effects, ranges from $13 to $19 billion annually, depending on market conditions. This constitutes about 7% of the GDP of Greece. The industry directly and indirectly employs over 200,000 to 300,000 people. Despite Greece's relatively modest size, Greek shipping sets the country apart as a crucial player in the multilateral trading system. It serves as a vital and strategic partner for major trading nations, with approximately 22% and 20% of the fleet's activity supporting US and European trade respectively. The largest share, around 32%, caters to the rapidly growing Asian economies. The Greek economy ranks as the 53rd largest globally and the 16th largest within the EU, boasting a nominal GDP of $242 billion. As of 2023, Greece's GDP per capita stands at $23,000 nominally and $39,000 at purchasing power parity. Greece is gradually recovering from one of the most severe depressions experienced by a rich country since the Second World War. Note that Greece lost over a third of its GDP from its peak to the lowest point in 2013. The recovery has been slow, with a few years of sluggish growth. Rebuilding after such a significant economic downturn is challenging, considering the need for investment, capital production and productivity. The Greek people deserve credit for enduring unpopular reforms and deep austerity measures, including salary and pension cuts, to pull their country out of financial turmoil. While Greece still grapples with substantial debt and numerous challenges, it is indeed emerging from the crisis. However, there's a considerable amount of work left to be done.